Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to speak about if Tesla's price cuts are working and what is it that is happening on the front lines. Do we see an increase um, surge in demand or the cars are just not selling despite the price cuts? And Palantir announces a new foundation yesterday. And I want to talk about what it is and what it possibly means for the stock. So it's a two in one video. And as always, if you like this content, please make sure you subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon link, which is the first link in the description box below. You will be able to get direct access to me. There will be some exclusive content that explains my stock market strategy. It's a really, really cool video and some other goodies. So let's begin the video. We are going to look at an article by Altrek um, that recently came out, and this gives us a very good insight into what is happening. So Tesla is seeing unprecedented demand uh, in stores hitting new records. So Tesla is currently experiencing unprecedented demands in US following the significant price cuts that happened last week. So this is significant because of many various factors. For example, January is usually not a busy month for Tesla. You can look at the Tesla earnings and usually you see a huge drop from Q4 to Q1 because you know Q1 people are just not thinking about buying cars. That's number one. Number two is the economy is in a recession. So the fact that the stores are hitting new records is very, very significant. So many stores are hitting new records and inventories are dwindling. Last week, Tesla implemented massive price cuts uh, of up to $13,000 on Model 3 and Model Y vehicles in the US. The automaker tried to claim that the price cuts were due to partial normalization of cost inflation, but most industry experts agreed that Tesla needed, to, uh, needed the price cuts to create demand. Uh, a week later, Altrek can confirm that the price cuts are working and doing just that. Sources familiar with the matter told Altrek that many Tesla stores in North America had reached their new record for sales in a single week. One source familiar with Tesla sales said that the company is experiencing unprecedented demand in North America following the price cuts. Tesla saw similar, similar action in China after the price cuts there. So they basically piloted this price cut strategy in China. They saw that it was working and then they implemented it in the US and EU. And being from Sweden, I can tell you that there's newspapers, all the articles out all over Sweden, how the car market is upside down because of the Tesla price cuts. And I believe it's also working here. There is a very much pent up demand for Teslas now. So it's really, really working. The inventory is decreasing at a record rate in several key U.S. markets. Uh, as for new custom orders, Tesla will likely run out of build slots for the North American markets in the next few days. I don't know what that means because, I mean, obviously, if they run out of build slots, they build the cars, then there's new slots opening. So that usually doesn't happen until much later in the quarter. Don't know what that means. But here's a top comment, which is very, very interesting and really illustrates what I've been saying in previous videos. I don't even think of it as a price cut, but as the end of price gouging. And that's a very interesting way of saying it. Uh, my Model Y long range is now back down to exactly what I paid for it two and a half years ago when I bought mine. Uh, some of the stuff going on into it costs more now, but I bought two months into the production run, so surely they are more effective now. Very, very true. Meaning the overall margin is probably about what it was when I bought mine. In the meantime, they've ranked in, they've raked in a, hu a huge pile of cash, which thankfully they have spent on building manufacturing capacity rather than dividends and stock buybacks. Again, it's because all of us as Tesla investors are worried about what is going to happen with the Tesla margin. And I've been pointing this out. Uh, I showed you even a tweet from uh, Gally in my last video that he's saying that even with these price cuts, he bought his Model Y cheaper two years ago than it is now. So Tesla is very, very uh, good at marketing and how they present things because everybody has this idea how much the prices have been cut and everybody seems to forget that Tesla has been steadily raising prices in the last two years. And now they're basically just back down to uh, where they started. However, we know for a fact that they have been much more efficient in, in the production. You know, they, they cut costs everywhere they can. Um, so what I'm trying to say is I really, really want to see the 
Q4 earnings call because I am not sure that the margins are getting hit the way that the stock market thinks that they're getting hit and the way that investors are thinking that they're getting hit. For sure, there's a hit to margins. I just think it will be surprisingly low. Now, on to the next news. Yesterday, there came out a shareholder letter by Alex Carp about uh, a new foundation that Palantir is doing. This is, seems to be like a nonprofit entity um, from Palantir. And what the heck is this? So let's dig into it. The company we have built remains the principal means through which we intend to shape the world, but there is even more that we can do. To that end, we are establishing the Palantir Foundation for Defense Policy and International Affairs. The demand for effective enterprise software from both commercial and government institutions has never been more significant. We have been fortunate in that we came of age as a company just as every large institution in the world was becoming a software enterprise. And we have built what those institutions require both to succeed and survive. Our software is now in the fight around the world, supporting American allied soldiers and intelligence operatives on the front lines. We acknowledge that software can be used as a weapon of war and that ours enables the more efficient targeting and elimination of an enemy. But we also understand that public discourse about the appropriate use of such, such software is as critical as its construction. The foundation will serve as an additional means of advancing that discussion. Sincerely, Dr. Alex Karp. Very interesting because I believe with this, what they are trying to handle is the PR and the reputation of uh, Palantir, that they are, you know, like this uh, spy software company and they're into shady and murky business and they're basically opening up for discussions. And I think this is potentially very, very good. Now, let's read about the foundation a little bit more. What are they going to do in this foundation? So the Palantir Foundation for Defense and um, po Defense Policy and International Affairs, a nonpartisan organization uh, dedicated to advancing national security through academic and technical research, support of emerging technologies, and policy development. So what I'm really liking in this is there has been a little bit of a politicization of uh, Palantir because one of the co-founders, Peter Thiel, was a very a loud supporter of Trump. And even though Alex Karp uh, publicly says that he's a Democrat, people somehow don't remember that. And they only remember that Peter Thiel was supporting Trump. And somehow they associate Palantir with the Democrats. And I think it's, it's amazing to open up platforms where, you know, academic research um, you know, can speak out and 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 you really advertise that this is a non-partisan thing. So I think that this is a very good thing. Then they're going to be involved in academic research, sponsorship of postgraduate researchers in the range of fields, including information technology, the physical sciences, philosophy, law, and international affairs. I think this is also potentially really good. And I really like that they're transparent about it and how they're doing this, because you know, you have one aspect of AI, which is the software, right? But then you have an ethics philosophy and, you know, what is good and okay to do because, you know, AI can be used like in China where you have a social uh, credit score and, you know, the government becomes sort of like a big brother. And I think this should be avoided at all costs. And I'm very happy that Pantheer believes the same thing. And uh, they are, seem to be one of the most prominent companies uh, on this front. So I think it's very important to, uh, you know, lay down clear foundations and clear boundaries of what AI has the right to do, how far it can go, you know, can it spy on citizens, how it can handle citizens' data, what are the best practices. And I understand that this is best done not by the company, but by a nonprofit, nonpartisan foundation that supports, you know, university scholars that make these announcements and decisions. So I, I really like this. Conference, an annual conference in Washington, D.C., bringing together thought leaders from across the industry and government. This is, again, very good PR for Palantir, again, pushing that they're non-partisan, uh, and this is just putting Palantir more out there in the know. This will also potentially create that Palantir will be synonymous with, you know, how do we run government in the modern age? How do we run industry in the modern age? 
uh, how do we do with AI in the modern range? So this is really good from a PR standpoint. And I honestly think that this should be done. And again, if you think about it, it is best done by a foundation that is nonprofit and separate from an actual company. The journal featuring provocative uh, commentary and essay on national uh, security policy and international affairs. So it's the same thing. They're bringing up ideas and, you know, they are starting conversations that is outside the company. Fellowships, award of fellowships to undergraduate and graduate students interested in pursuing careers at the intersection of software defense policy and international affairs. So this is more of the same from a different viewpoint. So I really looked on the internet and there's literally no more information other than this website and the shareholder letter that uh, Carp wrote. I'm, I really like what I'm seeing, but it's uh, too little information. So we kind of need to see if um, this materializes into something uh, good, but I think it's a very good direction. They're addressing very, very good points and I'm really liking this as a Palantir shareholder. So guys, let me know what you thought about today's video. And uh, if you know more about this uh, foundation and if you think it's a good idea, uh, please make sure you're subscribed. Why not check out the Patreon link in the description box below? And I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.